In the late 1970s and early 1980s, the Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar smuggled a range of exotic animals into his estate known as Hacienda Napolis, where he built, among other things, an airport, a garden of life-sized dinosaurs, and a private zoo, which housed a range of animals including one male and three female hippopotamus. Upon Pablo's demise in the early 1990s, most of the animals were relocated to actual zoos, with the exception of the hippos who were more difficult to move. These enormous mammals eventually broke free from their quickly degrading enclosure, took up residence in a local lake, and later moved to the largest river in Colombia, the Magdalena River. In the last three decades, this population has grown considerably due to Colombia's lush tropical habitat and a lack of natural predators. In Africa, hippo calves and weaker adults are preyed upon by prides of lions and packs of hyenas, among other animals, but every report that I read suggests that the solitary jaguar, the largest carnivore in South America, is unlikely to prey on the Colombian population of hippos. According to The Guardian, as of late 2023, the official government count was 169 hippos, and that if nothing is done to control their breeding, the population will grow to as many as 1,400 by 2040. Furthermore, a study published in 2021 suggests that sightings of hippos in Colombia now stretch hundreds of kilometers up the Magdalena River from their original location. This poses several problems. Multiple sources suggest the hippopotamus is one of the top 10 deadliest animals, killing around 500 humans per year in Africa, which is double the number killed by both lions and Cape Buffalo. The Magdalena River is used by both fishermen and tradesmen, and until relatively recently, territorial hippopotamus were not something they had to contend with. This situation came to a crux in March of 2022, with the Colombian government officially labeling the hippopotamus an invasive species. This declaration by the Colombian government made this situation particularly contentious under Colombian law and was escalated to a legal case used to decide how this herd should be controlled, a case that was the focus of a study published in the journal Laws in 2023. While much of this legal study is out of the scope of this video, it does lay out nicely the arguments for and against the hippos in Colombia, and some of the solutions proposed, something we'll explore with footage from Africa as we've now run out of most of the Colombian photos and ambiguous looking video. The study states that many invasive alien species are dealt with using species management programs which generally fall into four broad approaches prevention, eradication, containment, and control, which can be done via an array of methods from killing through poisoning or shooting to the movement or fertility control of the species in question. The author goes on to state that regarding the hippos, two species management strategies are currently being explored as part of the legal case, euthanasia and fertility control. Discussions surrounding these two strategies will consider if the interests of the hippos are being taken into account and whether it is possible to do so while also protecting the environment. As previously mentioned, there are arguments both for and against the hippos. Research into environmental impacts has found pollution and biodiversity loss linked to the increasing hippo population including the creation of anoxic water conditions due to the fecal matter, generating high mortality rates in certain fish and aquatic species, in addition to those who rely on the light within the rivers. On the flip side, arguments have been made that hippos are filling a gap in the ecosystem and will potentially help the rewilding efforts within Colombia via the introduction and growth of a keystone species. In terms of human impact, there are also arguments for and against the hippos. At the time of publishing in 2023, there were no reported deaths associated with hippos in Colombia. However, there have been media reports of attacks and injuries from the hippos in addition to property damage, 
and issues with access to rivers due to hippo harassment. Interestingly, in addition to these direct threats to humans, there have been initial reports of connections between the hippos and wildlife trafficking, with traffickers taking advantage of the lack of control measures to steal baby hippos, which risks the additional spread of hippos in Colombia. Arguments for the hippos in terms of human effect center around tourism, with the study stating that the hippos are seen relatively positively with those around the Escobar estate, with businesses utilizing the megafauna as a tourist attraction, demonstrating the use of the species as a form of ecotourism. Bearing all of this in mind, the author introduces the concept of species justice and states that currently legal systems, rights and laws operate from an anthropocentric perspective, with the rights of humans being at the heart of these systems. Globally, non-human animals are rarely perceived as the victims of criminality and harm, with them generally being seen as property with very few protections unless they serve the interests of human beings. This perspective is routed in speciesism with the idea that humans are superior to non-human animals and as such have rights and protections from harm where non-human animals do not. On the flip side, species justice views the rights and well-being of wildlife from a different perspective, taking the approach that rights should not be provided based on the notion of the value of a species to human beings, but based on the sentience of the species, with most being able to demonstrate an array of behaviours. For example, hippos have been observed to demonstrate clear evidence of sentience, with an array of behaviours including communication, distinct relationships between mother and calf, and reactions to death within a herd all being documented. Specific to this population of hippos, under Colombian law, non-human animals are protected under the Animal Protection Statute, Law 84, of 1989. An amendment in 2016 established five principles of animal welfare. Freedom from hunger or thirst, freedom from discomfort, freedom from pain, injury or disease, freedom to express normal behavior, and freedom from fear and distress by ensuring conditions and treatment which avoid mental suffering. The complication for this population of hippos is related to their status as an invasive species and whether they are actually protected under Colombian legislation. An example is used from the United Kingdom. Grey squirrels are considered a pest species and can be legally killed by utilizing such methods as poisoning and traps under the wildlife and conservation law in an effort to protect native red squirrel populations which are protected. The official position of two local authorities is that the focus should be on the removal of the hippos from the ecosystem via euthanasia through yearly culls. Whereas the NGO Animal Balance brought forward the argument of fertility control via the use of the drug PZP, which is administered by DART and is currently used in zoos to control hippo fertility, being effective for around eight months before further doses are needed. The author of the study states that neither euthanasia nor fertility control is fully in the interest of the hippos, However, arguably, fertility control takes their interests more into account, whereas euthanasia goes against them. At the time of publishing in March 2023, no decision had been made. However, an article published by the Colombian Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development six months later in November 2023 suggests that a combination of three methods were to be used. Some hippos were to be sterilized, some euthanized, and others were to be translocated, stating that communications had started with Mexico, India, and the Philippines. The most recent news reports suggest that these translocation plans fell through, with an estimated cost of $3.5 million, and that a Colombian court has now called for the hunting of the hippos, although I wasn't able to confirm if this actually took place. Back on the African continent, the common hippopotamus is currently listed as vulnerable, 
with a population of between 115 to 130,000 total individuals when it was last assessed in 2016. This population has decreased since the previous 2008 assessment of 125 to 148,000. However, it is thought that those numbers were overestimated and as such the population trend is set to stable and the conservation status of vulnerable remains unchanged. The range of the hippo covers a whopping 37 countries across sub-Saharan Africa, stretching from Senegal and the Gambia in West Africa across the entire continent to Somalia and south to the northern regions of South Africa. The common hippopotamus is easily one of the largest mammals to exist on land, with only the three elephant species topping the maximum weight of this species according to my research. Both National Geographic and PBS Nature cite a maximum weight of 4,500 kilograms or 10,000 pounds. However, this might be referencing a captive individual in Germany. Most of the other sources I collected suggested that hippos usually weigh up to 3,200 kilograms or 7,000 pounds, which is still more than enough to surpass all five rhino species and the largest giraffe on record, awarding the common hippo the coveted title of the fourth largest land mammal on Earth. This isn't, however, the end of the podium quest for the hippo. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the common hippo has the largest mouth of any terrestrial animal, which can open almost 180 degrees and stretches to 1.2 meters or 4 feet when fully open. This enormous mouth span is almost the same size as the length of its closest relative, the pygmy hippopotamus, which measures 5 to 6 feet in length and is just one-tenth the weight of its common relative with most sources suggesting the maximum weight of this species is roughly 270 kilograms or 600 pounds. The pygmy hippo is extant in just four countries in West Africa, found from Sierra Leone to Côte d'Ivoire and is now extinct in Nigeria. It is said to be less aquatic than the common hippopotamus found in forest habitats and wetlands throughout its range. It is also distinct from the common hippopotamus by its social habits, being classified as solitary rather than congregating in large groups. They are, however, primarily nocturnal, the same as the common hippo, using the water to cool down during the day before moving to land during the night to feed. This species has been observed feeding from late afternoon until midnight, a time they spend gorging on a range of vegetation, including grasses, tender roots, leaves, and fallen fruit. Gestation is around six to seven months in the pygmy hippopotamus, compared to the eight months that most sources cite for its common cousin. In addition to physical stature, the population size of the pygmy hippopotamus is also much smaller, with between two to two and a half thousand mature individuals estimated to remain when it was last assessed 10 years ago in 2015 although this was trending downwards. This mature population size is almost the exact same as the Indian rhino, one of a handful of rhinoceros species you can learn about in this video, exploring all five species of rhino. Thank you so much for watching.